Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with The Fabric Patch, and today I'm going to show you a really fast quilt called Stacks. My daughter and I have owned and operated a busy quilt shop in Washington State for over 20 years. We have a retreat center, an active YouTube channel, and a large pattern line featuring our creations. My two sons work on machines. One daughter-in-law is our videographer, and the other is a long-arm quilter. We are a family that love each other, we laugh together, and every once in a while we get some work done. We have a crew that are saints for their efforts at keeping us on track. Thanks for joining us on our wild ride. Stax is actually a quilt that's been around for a long time and it can be made multiple different ways. But I like to make it with a layer cake. So what you can do is you can get something where you've got 10 inch squares that are already pre-cut for you and then most of the work is done. But if you are part of our 2021 quilt club, you are getting fabric rolls delivered to your house with this pattern. We have started doing some fabric rolls and the fabric rolls are 11 11 inch pieces. We have 12 different patterns that we've designed using these rolls. You might be cutting them into 44 10 inch squares. You might be doing some strips. There's a bunch of different rectangles. There's a bunch of different things that you can do. It's a little bit more affordable than a pre-cut 10 inch pack. And the other thing with the 10 inch pack is that we find that we sell out of them really, really quickly. So this gives you a few more options. We have them in multiple colors and multiple styles. It's also what we suggest that people use for the pixelated quilts because you can get a lot of sol solids in a really nice cut of fabric. So the pattern itself is just one page. For a lot of our quick quilts that we've done, we leave out all of the basic information to get it all on one page to make it a nice, affordable, quick pattern. It is available as a download or as a printed copy on our website at fabricpatch.net. Um, so again, if you have the rolls, you're going to cut your rolls into 44 10 inch squares or if you have other strange fabric maybe you have just some weird pieces that are left over that kind of um, you know you you don't have a lot of use for something like this you can cut all of these into the same piece because or into the same block to make this piece. So there's really just two units with this and you can kind of tell from your pattern that all you need is two 10 inch strips, two five inch strips and a five inch square. That's why you could actually do this with a charm and um, a jelly roll if you'd like to do that. But if you don't mind cutting, it's kind of a nice thing if you have some weird random leftover pieces. I've got a two and a half by 10 inch strip. I have another two and a half by 10 inch strip. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my five inch square. Oops. And then all I need is two more strips that are two and a half inches by five inches. And then what has happened is my um, weird little leftover piece of fabric really becomes something that's usable. It can be a block in a scrappy quilt. And you can use up all of those weird leftover pieces. And so this becomes one of those units. So I might have this one. I might have some other weird random leftover pieces that I'll cut up this way. But what we've suggested for you guys is to either start with a layer cake or again, take your roll and cut it into 10 inch squares. And then what makes it nice and quick is all you have to do is with your 10 inch square, I've got a couple of them layered. I actually have four, 
fabrics layered here. I would say layer the number that you feel confident cutting because of course if you make a mistake you've made a mistake through four blocks. So what I would do is measure over two and a half inches. So I've got that on my ruler. And then I'm going to turn this. If you have one of those rotating mats that works really well. If not, rotate your mat. I have a large one that I'll use on my cutting counter, but if I'm doing something like this, I'll just use a smaller mat. Just going to measure over two and a half inches and cut that one. And then I'm just going to move these out of the way for a second because now I'm going to measure up two and a half inches. And the reason that I would prefer actually to turn the board instead of the fabric is it keeps everything stacked and nice and tidy. Okay, so now that all of these have been cut, then all you have to do is you just swap one out. So I'm going to take one of the bottom ones. So see, here's those two bottom colors. Here's the two top colors. Trade these out. I'm going to sew my top to my bottom, bottom to my, or top to my center, bottom to my center, press, and then we'll sew the sides on. So I'm going to sew these and I'll be right back. All right, so these have been sewn and it's important to go ahead and press them. And if you don't use a mister, I just want to suggest that you use a mister. These are kind of nice because even if you're using best press in there, and that's what I do, so I just pour my best press, but do you see? the tiny little bit that comes out. What's really nice is that when it comes out, then you don't have, you don't use more than you need to and it doesn't kind of like, you know, splooch out all over the place. All right, and it is important that you press your blocks because it's important always that you press your seams open because the size is important. So then once you've done that, I've already pressed this other one, I've got this one, so this is of course what it looks like. And just to note, of course, what you've got is this one because we've got our seam allowance here, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. This is now an inch longer than it needs to be. It doesn't matter, we just trim it at the end. So that's just what happens when we're cutting a pre-cut is you end up with everything cut into the units that you need and then you worry about size here in a little bit. So all you're gonna do is we'll fold this one over, we'll sew this one to this side, fold this one over, sew this one to this side, and of course what's underneath it is the opposite block. I'm gonna sew this over and sew it. for the dark one and then the white. Sew this one over and sew it. Okay, so, um, so these are sewn and again, same thing, we're just going to mist this with a little bit of best press and press these open. And your quilt, quilt block, probably could be trimmed to nine inches if you are extremely accurate with your quarter inch seam allowance, but in the pattern, I just suggested that you trim them all to eight and a half inches just because um, probably what's most important is that all of your blocks are the exact same size. If they're all the exact same size, then all of your rows horizontally and vertically are going to line up just perfect and you won't have any issues. So that's what I would do, but of course you can modify that however you'd like to. The other thing that's kind of nice is that after you've made all of these blocks, if you want to make it a little bit bigger, you want to do something different, your other options could be that you could find a fabric that you really like and you want to cut this maybe into some eight and a half inch blocks and intermix that in there. Your other option is to swap out some of your centers or some of your borders with a focus fabric and have something else that you have very consistently throughout the quilt. So it's kind of a fun, versatile, fast pattern. Um, there is one more um, trick that I want to show you and that's with your squaring up. I of course like a square up ruler um, rather than using my mat for measurements because I think that it's more accurate and since I'm going to trim these up to eight and a half, um, if you've taken classes from us before you um, already know that we use a wet erase marker. If you don't find these locally we do have them on our website. There's lots of different colors and so what I always do is I take my ruler and I'm going to measure 
where my eight and a half is. The reason that I do that is because so often I will go to line everything up and I'll measure it and I'll realize I was looking at the three and a half inches when I was supposed to be looking at the three and a quarter inches or two and a half. So I have a little mark just so that I know where it is. The other thing that I'm going to do is that I know that my center square is four and a half inches piece finished, four and a half inches. So when I line this up, I can see where I need to be when I'm trimming when I'm trimming my um, eight and a half. So I'm putting a little line right there to see that and that's what's going to line up with my inside square. So then all I have to do when it comes time to trim all of these blocks is I can just take my ruler and I'm going to lay this down and I can see that I've got my line that lines up. And I'm going to cut across the side and the top. And then turn. And then I'm going to line up what I've cut down here with this one. It will also line up. You can see that this also lines up right up here in the corner. I have two little reference points and I'm going to cut this off. And you can see that if I didn't, if I would have left this nine inches, look at the amount I've cut off there, and look at this amount. So, mm, you know, things shift a little bit when you sew them and when you press them, and so that's why I oftentimes will like a block that I get to square up afterwards just to make sure that everything is the way that it should be. So this is my first eight and a half inch block. I'm just going to do the same thing again just so you can see that. Again, here's my little mark. So I'm going to line that up. And you can also make sure that you have enough to trim when you're looking down here. Line everything up. Oops, did I get that center? Turn that. Line up my bottom. It lines up perfectly on my corner right there. Everything is nice and straight. And again, here is my perfect eight and a half inch block. And it's not just a perfect eight and a half inch block, but then again, my measurement of what's cut all the way around my square is the same on all of my blocks. So I'll keep doing that, trim up all of my blocks until I have enough and you know depending upon how many blocks you're making and how big your quilt will be. One last thing just to mention is that the reason that we use the wet erase marker is because when we're done this just comes off with just a little bit of just a wet finger or a wet paper towel. It'll just come right off whereas a dry erase marker you're going to smudge with your hand or if you flip it upside down you'll smudge it with your hand. So that's why we use the wet erase and of course obviously not a permanent marker. So anyway I hope you've enjoyed this. It's a fun fun quilt block. Super super fast. Easy to make. Easy to make with lots of different colors. One simple little um, layer cake or a special little roll or lots of leftover pieces. So thanks for sewing with us. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.